welcome back. I'm, I'm going to just I'm going to gloss over this illness thing because I I for one don't believe you should be defined by it. But 20, January 2011, we sat here chatting, and I mean a few days later, you were pretty poorly, and you're back, and you're fitter and stronger and quicker than ever. Yeah, like you said, back in 2011, we sat on this stage and just announced the uh, World Series of ISR with my teammate being Daniel Ricciardo. Unfortunately, I'm not back having uh, two years out of racing and now coming back racing a Porsche last year, which was which was a great season. And um, now moving on towards the end of last year, I went for a GP3 race in Abu Dhabi and had some two fantastic results to come back in. Fitness was a little bit of an issue to me, but went out there just done the best job I could. We'll talk about GP3 in a minute, but Porsche-wise, uh, the cut and thrust of one make championship racing in a very high-tech, quick car like that, you were straight into it and you won straight away. So you must have thought, right, I'm going to be okay. Yeah, the expectations, I didn't expect to go out and do, the, do what I did straight off, but me being, I got in the car on the first test day in February last year and I was quick straight away. So to go out there and have two wins at Brands actually the first two weekends or first two races of the weekend, it was good, but at the end of the day, it was me to get back into motorsport after sitting there in the end of 2012, deciding what to race and having a chat with Tiff Nadell and moving forward into Porsche Guerra Cup, which was a great series. And it's a hard car to learn. There's a lot of people say how tricky it is to all the weights in the back of the car with a lot of understeer, but we managed to adapt to the car pretty well. Do you think you were a target for people in that championship? Because, you, you, because of your pedigree and the story behind you. You'd won the Formula 2 championship, and it, it was, if you like, a, a retrograde step for you. That must have ruffled some feathers. Yeah, after winning Formula 2 and ever having all that time out, all I wanted to do is go back racing and enjoy myself. Um, at the end of the day, I just wanted to enjoy myself and go out there, and I didn't expect to go out and have two wins straight away, so... The pressure was on throughout the season, but the other drivers were more concerned about me than I was concerned about them. At the end of the day, I was enjoying myself. I wanted to go single-seater racing again, and in the last year, I had a racing GP3 to prove that I still had the speed. That's answered my next question, actually. I was, was going to say, were you thinking about returning to single-seaters before and during the Porsche thing? Not really. I was aiming just to finish the Porsche Carrera Cup series, finish it. And then it was only I was in the gym with my fitness trainer, just working hard. And uh, he turned around and said to me, I want you to write down for the next six months what you want to do. And uh, I was on the cross train at the time, and I said, I want to go single seat racing again. And from there, we wrote down the list of what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. I said to my dad, can we see if we can get a test in a GP3 car in Abu Dhabi just the three days after, and rang a few teams, and from there... We had another team ring up, and then we spoke to another team, and they had a, a seat available for the race. So from there on, we ended up, ended up racing. Did it come about very quickly then? That you just suddenly had this, you did the test, and then uh, Karainen said, right, we're going to put you in a race. Well, the test was after the race. I went straight into the race. Yeah, that's right, yeah, you just raced. You went straight into it, didn't you? Yeah, I went straight, straight into the race, and it was 45-minute practice session, then into a qualifying session, so... It was going to be difficult, but there was, I've done it before, so that there was no reason why I couldn't push and do the best job I could. Did you find the car easy to drive? Was it what you expected? <laughs> I've driven the GP3 car the very first year the car was built. Um, it was different to what I was expecting. The tyres are very on or off. There, there's only one or two laps you get to push on the tyres. And to go straight into two races, not knowing how the tyre was going to last, how the car performed over the long duration. But the hardest thing was me being out for so long of a single seat at the physical side and the demand on the body was, was really tough. Are you stronger now than you were before? Bearing in mind what's happened. Yeah, I am a lot stronger than what I was. Uh, going back when I was ill, I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs, but... Now it's all about in the gym every day, just doing everything I can. After the side effects I've got, the nerve damage, I've shown that I can put that to one side and actually do a good job. Yeah. 
It's a great story. Um, you're going to stay in GP3. You're on the Formula One circus. You race on Formula One tracks. You race in front of Formula One team managers. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to do GP3 this year. Um, there's a few teams we're looking at. We've had a few offers from teams. But at the end of the day, we're in front of the big boys now. And all I can do is, if you do a good job, they're going to be looking at me on the TV screens. And you never know where you can go. We wish you all the best. I hope you come back next year as GP3 champion. That would be cool, wouldn't it? This year in GP3. Yeah. And you come back in 12 months' time as champion. That would be good. Yeah, that, that's the aim at the end of the day. And uh, we're looking at the average point score. If you finish eighth in every race, you should be able to win the championship. I like it. Yeah. Good luck, mate. Nice to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Stoneman. Thanks, mate.